Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to Red Dirt Rods. Now today we're working on a really cool restoration project, how to rebuild a wheel cylinder. Now a wheel cylinder is used to actuate the shoes in a drum brake application. These are typically replaced, but if you have something that's rare, you wanna keep it all original, or you just can't find a replacement wheel cylinder, you can rebuild it, and we're gonna show you how. All you need is a kit that you can get from your local parts store. They're very affordable. This one cost about eight bucks. We did have to wait a couple of days for them to order it in, but we were able to get it. And we're gonna show you guys how to do this for your project. Okay, so all we need to do this are, are, is our wheel cylinder. This one actually came off of a 90 Chevy truck. Our wheel cylinder kit, which contains a couple of boots, a couple of plunger seals, and a new spring. We're gonna use a brake cylinder hone, which is what this is. It looks just like a engine cylinder three stone hone, but this will fit inside of here. We've also got a small tub that has some diesel in it. I like to use this because it's good to clean and break down grease. All right, first thing we're gonna do is pop this seal off. You can see how rusty and crusty this is. Now, we can't even move this thing. This is fully seized up. So we're gonna have to knock that out. This is really seized up, so I'm gonna hit this with some WD-40 Rust Penetrant. We're gonna let that soak for a minute. Give this a couple quick taps. Yeah, and it's just compressing more. All right, we're at the point where we're not gonna be able to get this out. Okay, so now, we're gonna flip this over. We're gonna pull this one, which is completely torn. Oh, this is really, really rusty. So now, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna just use this small ball peen and I'm gonna tap this, I'm gonna tap this all the way out. Okay, this one is really rusted, so we went ahead and loaded into our vise, and we're just gonna use a wood dowel, and we're gonna use our hammer and tap this all the way out. Good gravy. All right, so we spray in that. We're gonna go ahead and flip it over try driving it back the other way. Good. This one's gonna take some time. Tell you what, we're gonna put this in the diesel and let this soak overnight and break up some of that rust. What we're gonna do here is we're gonna go ahead and remove the zert. Of course it's stripped. We're gonna go ahead and fill this up with some of this rust penetrant. Let this soak overnight and hopefully we can get these out. I've got this small cup. I'm gonna take our wheel cylinder, I'm gonna put it in it, and then I'm gonna fill this up with rust dissolver. So this should eat all the rust and leave us with a nice looking piece. We're gonna let this sit overnight and we'll come back and break this apart in the morning. All right, now we've had our wheel cylinder sitting in the rust dissolver soak over the weekend, and look at that, no more rust. It looks like a brand new part. 
one of the uh, ends even came out on its own. So now all we have to do is pull it the rest of the way apart, clean up the inside, and rebuild it. We've got our wheel cylinder cleaned up. Uh, we just washed it off with a little bit of brake clean, and we got the other piston out, which, by the way, is uh, in pretty rough shape. So this is the clean piston that came out and got cleaned up. This one was still bound up in the wheel cylinder, and notice how crusty this is. We're gonna clean that up by hand. But first, we need to get these fittings off. So we've got a number 10 on our impact. These are in there pretty good. So we're gonna use this so we don't strip it out because we wanna reuse that fitting. There we go, set that aside. Then, we're gonna take the hard line fitting off, same way. There we go. This will get replaced. That will get replaced. So with the fittings out, we're going to take our three stone hone. Okay, this is just a regular uh, expanding hone that you can get at any parts store. And I like to use a little bit of diesel for this. So this is a good lubricant. I'm gonna stick that in here. Put these down and then we're just gonna spin this through a few times to see if there's any pits, anything like that that, that would make this not rebuildable. So I count to about 15 and then I'm just gonna take a little brake clean. Okay. Run a cloth through there. It looks pretty good. There's a couple of possible scoring areas where the cylinders, I'm sorry, the plungers were sitting and just kind of bound up. I think we'll run that hone a little bit more and we should be good to go. I'm gonna tighten the spring, which will put a little more outward pressure. All right, we're gonna go ahead and lube this up. Put it back in. Now right here, because there's a couple of little marks inside that I didn't like, I'm going to focus on the center section. That will keep the outer edges sealed up a little bit better and uh, just focus on the, the bad area. Take this out, see what we got. You see that in there? It's pretty clean, looks pretty good. We got a couple of rough areas. I think we're gonna go ahead and run that hone just a little bit more. This isn't like an engine cylinder where if you hone just a hair too much, you're gonna have sealing problems. These are the boots, and you can see they've got quite a bit of taper on them. So these should provide a good amount of seal. If I can get it back up, all right. Never do this dry. Always have it wet. Should always be good and wet inside here. Okay. Oh yeah, now we're getting there. It's starting to look really good. Oops, drop that side through here.
Oh yeah, that's great. We've got one minor little ring in here all the way at the center and these pistons are never going to be all the way compressed inside there so i actually think this is going to work really really well there's no major pits a couple of minor scores but i don't think they'll affect sealing so we're going to rebuild this okay so now we need to address this plunger because this has a bunch of build up and it's kind of crusty so we can try a piece of scotch bright and just clean it up a little bit by hand and see how that does. It's actually doing pretty good. So if you don't have a lot of issue, you can, if you don't have a lot of corrosion on your plunger, you should be able to clean it up with a piece of Scotch-Brite. If you need to get more aggressive, you can use a Rolock pad with a ultra fine uh, surface prep disc like this one. Uh, this is just a little cordless polisher that we got from Ingersoll Rand. You can also use an air tool like a die grinder. But if you're gonna do this, you're gonna need to be careful and just lightly buzz it, just like that. And you're gonna wanna keep it flat just like that. Now we're getting all of that corrosion and junk off of there. And we should be able to get this back to nice and smooth. We're also gonna clean the inside up. And the outside. Now this really shouldn't affect the seal because the seal is all done with this. We're gonna check our fit. Okay, so it's still sitting a little bit. It's not going in quite smooth. We hit this stuff here and it starts to bog down. We're gonna check the other one and we're gonna go ahead and peel this cup off and toss that. So we'll clean that up, but we want to see how this one fits because this one got all of the rust off with our de-rust liquid. See, now that one slides nice and smooth. We haven't touched this one. So uh, we need to keep working on this until it slides smooth like that. Now this is just a surface prep pad and it is an ultra fine, so it's not going to take much if any metal off. It's just getting rid of that corrosion there which has kind of lifted up on the surface. It's almost up. Oh, there we go. All right. So now we're ready to assemble. Now we're ready to actually assemble our new wheel cylinder. So we've got the uh, plungers Okay, so these are cleaned up and ready to go. I like to put a just a dab of grease on the back side of the plunger. It helps hold the cup in place, and so if you ever have to do this again, it should keep it from being stuck. I just I like to do this just a little bit of uh, preparation. So first thing we're gonna do, pull that back off. We're going to take our end boot. This is the boot that goes on the outside. There's a little groove here. We're just going to snap this in there. Okay. Just like that. That's what it should look like. We've already got this one done. Okay. We've got our plunger. I'm going to stick the plunger. This is our plunger seal. I'm going to stick that back on here. And here's the spring. So this is really simple. So I start with one side and you just kind of bend that a little bit to get it stuck in. Okay, and then you slide in your plunger and you work the boot around the uh, cylinder case. It'll snap over, okay, just like that. It should look like that on the end. Inside, We've got our plunger boot, okay? 
So right there. All right, so then we're gonna take our brand new spring. This comes in the kit. We're gonna drop that inside and we're gonna do the same with the other side. We're just gonna drop that in. The spring will keep everything square on the second one. If you have to pick it up, just keep a little pressure on the other side so it doesn't push out, okay? If you do it on the bench, it's easier. Just push it down and just kind of slowly work your boot around the outer edge. You don't really want to use a tool for this because you could tear it. So just kind of manipulate it with your fingers until it goes over. All right, so then you've got a plunger on this side, plunger on that side. It works really well. And this is the original uh, bleeder fitting. It works, it's in good shape. So we're gonna reuse it. You can replace this if you need to. And we're gonna replace the line on the car. And this is done. This will last us for years and keep our vehicle in service. It works great. Make sure you like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Let's make magic.